concentrate on joint tenancy. What's the signature? What's the key to a joint tenancy? The right of survivorship. What that means is, when one of the joint tenants, co-owners, dies, the property then passes to the next automatically. What are the requirements? In order to have a joint tenancy, you have to have four unities. Unity of time, unity of title, unity of interest, unity of possession. Unity of times, the interest of all the owners had to vest at the same time. Remember the rule, still the majority rule, or the prevailing view, that you cannot grant a joint tenancy in yourself. It was a case in your book from California that I said, it's, it's the minority view, that you know, in general what lawyers would do was create a straw man. They would give the property to somebody, right? That somebody would then give it back to both people, creating the four unities. California and about four or five other jurisdictions in the United States, they don't follow that anymore. They say it's useless. Unity of title uh, means that it came from the same document. One document at the same time. Not tomorrow, not the day after. One grant to both of them at the same time. Unity of interest, half and half. <clears throat> if somebody got one third and the other one got two thirds, it had to be uh, equal. Otherwise, it's not a joint tenancy. And finally, uh, unity of possession. Everybody has the right to possess the property in the same manner. It is my belief that the majority view still is the four unities. The modern law is the trend, the new approach, where it's going to, and it may well become the majority rule one day, but up to this moment, the four unity still remains the majority rule. Uh, what's the matter of law? The only thing you need of the four unities is unity of interest. That's what you need under the model law. However, because you only need one thing, you have to be very clear that what you want is a joint tenancy. You can understand why, right? If you see a grant that says, um, one, uh, one, one third to A, two thirds to B, correct? Uh, and they all can <coughs> possess the same, correct? Well, that looks like it's not, a, it's not a joint tenancy because it breaks the unities, correct? But on the modern trend, we don't need the unities anymore. So how do we know that this is uh, a joint tenancy? How do we know? Words. The words must be there. And what are the words that have to be there? Joint tenancy with right of survivorship. In all jurisdictions, that will do. All right. So that's how a joint tenancy is formed. Correct? <coughs> the unities. How is it destroyed? That's the important part. It's not, you know, once you have it, a lot of the questions and problems are about the destruction of the joint tenancy. Why is that important? Because of the right of survivorship. If you had a joint tenancy, right, and one of the parties died, the, the property goes to the other one. But if somewhere that joint tenancy was destroyed, right, now that property doesn't go to the other one. So it's important to understand uh, when it's created, but also if it's destroyed. And we know that a conveyance by one of the parties destroys the joint tenancy. The trick here is, what if you have four people as joint tenants and only one of them conveys? Right? Well, that would destroy the joint tenancy only as to that one, but not the other three. So A, B, C, and D are joint tenants with right of survivorship. Now, what happens if A sells it, sells an interest? Well, from now on, whoever A sold it to is not a joint tenant anymore, but the other three are. You and I are joint tenants, 
and I want to sell my interest, I don't need your permission. I don't even need to tell you. All I have to do is go and sell it. Leases. Quickly, uh, that's a uh, give or take 50-50 in the jurisdictions. The best answer is it doesn't. A lease does not destroy a joint tenancy. That's the best answer. That's the preferred answer. If I want to uh, lease the property, right, I don't have to tell you. I can lease it. However, how do we distribute the funds is a different issue, right? But I don't need to ask permission. A partition action will destroy the joint tenancy. Remember, because you were all confused in my test, right? In a joint tenancy, anybody can go and seek a partition without asking anybody else. You don't have to ask permission. The only time that you need to ask permission is in a tenancy by the entirety. If I want a partition, and we're going to talk a little bit about partition, I don't need to ask permission. I just go to court and say, hey, judge, I don't want this business of owning the hall between both of us. You know, I want the east side. Partition it. Give me the east, give it the west. And after you partition, we don't have a joint tenancy anymore. Of course we don't. Mortgages destroy joint tenancy only in a title theory jurisdiction. I go out and I mortgage my half. Or I get a, a security interest in my interest. Not half of the property. You cannot do that because I don't own half of the property. That's the other confusion students get. When you get a mortgage, you're not getting a mortgage on the west side. Because you don't own the west side. You have a half interest. So the mortgage is on half an interest of the whole black acre. This is what concurrent ownership is. You have to visualize this. So if the question says you are in a, a title theory jurisdiction, A and B are joint tenants. A goes out and gets a mortgage. When A dies, does B get the mortgage subject to the property? The answer is no. In a lien jurisdiction, when A dies, since he didn't destroy the mortgage, guess what happened? Right? He got the whole thing. In that case, the majority rule is B takes free and clear. All right. That's pretty much how it is destroyed. Now we're talking about what are the rights and duties of the joint tenants and what are the liabilities of each one of them. This has to be giving you a message as you study. We go back to the beginning, right? Uh, what gives you rights and duties? Possession. I don't want to say own it because there are times when you can have possession of something that you don't own, right? And yet have rights and duties, like with finders. So it's all about possession. So when you have a fact pattern, right? And A and B, B owns the land, but A is, is, is B's lover, right? And B decides to rent the land, correct? If A gets any money, it's not by virtue of being B's lover. It's not. Because they're not concurrent owners. They're lovers. And I'm saying that those are little quirks that sometimes they're putting your questions to you in the bar exam. And you go all crazy and you start finding the rights and liabilities and you forget to find out that they were never joint tenants or tenants in common in the first place. You didn't read that. So, just a warning. What are their rights and duties? The right to possession. We know that, right? Right to possession. A, counterintuitive. Counterintuitive. A, I have, have an interest, have an interest, but I can possess the whole. I can go anywhere in that land and enjoy it. I can hunt anywhere in that land. I can use the whole. I have the right to possess the whole, even though I only have have an interest. That's one of the rights. Right to possession. Right to convey. Right? You have the right to convey your interest. You have the right to go and ask for a partition. Now what's a partition? Simple. Right? You don't want to have an interest. You want half of the land. 
And there's two kinds of partitions, voluntary and judicial. Voluntary and judicial. Voluntary simply means, hey, buddy, come here. You know what? Let's quit this. You take the West, I take the East. Do we agree? Sure. We go to court, we fill out the deeds, you know, we divide the land, and we grant A the West, and E the West, we go and record that deed, and now I get to use my half, and you have no right to come in there. Now, that's La La Land. A lot of times what you have is ownership between seven people, eight people, a hundred persons. The first thing the court would try to do is try to divide the land in an equitable manner because in real life we don't have the east is as nice as the west. Usually what you what what you have is of course one side wants the better half. And the other one says, wait a second, I want that half. So we have a problem. Right? So what the do the court does is it says, okay, let's equitably divide this, and if the left is the better side, we make the one that gets the left pay some money to the one that's losing out to balance it out. Right? That's equity. So everybody comes out winning. I got the worst piece of land, but I also have $300,000 in my pocket. In a situation where interests are different, and it's impossible to equ equitably divide it. In that case, as last resort, the court, the court will sell the land by judicial sale and divide the proceeds. Judicial sale is last resort. That's the last thing. So if in the question you can see that it's possible to divide it without selling it, that's the best answer. However, if it's impossible because there's too many parties, you can't determine the value of the property, all those things, then you sell it. Uh, right to lease, license, and grant an easement. Both a joint tenant and a com uh, tenant common may lease the interest in the property. The person that leases the property his possession or her possession is not exclusive. Again, when you lease, what are you leasing? The same interest that the person that, that you lessor gave you. So you cannot be given exclusive rights. It is possible to have exclusive right if everybody agrees. Right? A and B agree. A is going to lease property to X, and we want to give her the exclusive right to the piece of property they're going to use, we can both agree. In that case, that's okay if all the parties agree. One co-tenant cannot grant an easement in the property which will be against the other one without their consent. What happens if I give an easement right away to the property and I may have a joint tenant? I'm giving somebody the permanent right to use that property, right? Now that may interfere with the rights of my co-tenant because now we have a, a, a road in the middle of the property. So that means that my co-tenant can never use that road. I mean, can use it, but that road is going to be there, right? So I cannot grant an easement without asking permission from my co-tenant. Rent. If you are a co-tenant and you live in the property, you don't have to pay rent. However, if you do rent and you have a right to lease, correct? If you do lease the property, you have the duty to account to your co-tenants for the profits made. The exception to the co-tenant not paying rent is what? An ouster. And we know that an ouster has to be physical or by judicial decree. And we also know that when one tenant is ousted and they go to court and they get an action of ejectment against the other co-tenant, right? They're not kicking the other co-tenant out. All they're getting is forcing the other co-tenant to let them in. So when we hear action of ejectment, in this case, it's not the same thing as an action of ejectment in adverse possession. 
the co-tenant can never kick the other one out. All you can do is tell the court, tell him to let me use my property. Right? So in that case, the other tenant, if you oust, now you pay rent. <coughs> Who fixes the property? Well, contributions from the other tenants will be required for necessary repairs. However, you will be, as a co-tenant, you will be required to contribute only if what? You were asked. If you weren't asked, you don't have to contribute. Taxes, where one tenant pays more than the share of the taxes, right? The other co-tenants are, are, li are liable for that. And, of course, both uh, co-tenants are not permitted to commit waste. Now, yesterday, we talked about waste, right? And, ladies and gentlemen, that's pretty much knowledge. What did we do? We talked about how it's formed, right? We talked about how it's destroyed, and we talked about what the rights and duties are. Now, I went quickly through it. There are little details that I didn't get into it. I just wanted to point to you, so when you're studying, deep into it.